In the center of the blood-soaked field it stood, looming over even the mightiest warriors. A twenty-foot-tall harbinger of death, built out of steel and stone. How anyone would hope to stand against such a force is simply beyond me. Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from the past and slap a fresh new coat of paint on them. This week we are talking about the mechanical menace, the Warforged Titan. This massive machine hails from 4th edition's Monster Manual 2, and it is nothing short of pure badass. Today we're going to talk about what it can do, what we can make it do, and of course how you can use it in your game. Now I realize some of you may not know too much about Warforged considering they don't really have much of a presence in 5th edition as it is right now. To sum them up, Warforged are mechanical beings created for the express purpose of doing battle on behalf of their creators. They are totally sentient, capable of independent thought, reasoning, and therefore, tactics. They are built to be without fear, without hesitation, and most importantly, without mercy. Most Warforged are constructed to be about the size and shape of a regular human, maybe a little bit larger. However, as you dig deeper, you'll come across more specialized models, let's say, such as our friend here, the Warforged Titan. They were among the first Warforged ever built, which makes total sense because if you figured out how to construct a thinking war machine, why would you not default to just building a massive robot, right? A Warforged Titan is in fact barely sentient and just charges directly into the center of battle, only really able to understand basic commands from its commander. In fact, many of the soldiers fighting on the same side as the Titan would be wise not to get too close to it in combat. Not that it would ever actively go against someone on its own side, Side, but I mean, those hammers tend to have a mind of their own, you know? The Warforged Titan heedlessly throws itself into the center of any fight. It almost always begins combat by bringing down its massive Warhammer, which is less of a well-crafted weapon and more of a giant stone slab. By doing this, it can force any creature it hits to make a strength save. If the creature fails this save, it's thrown 10 feet in the direction of the Titan's choosing. This is a nifty combat trick for most, but for the Titan, it's the first part of a deadly 1-2 combo. The Titan will almost always use this ability to get the target next to another enemy. Then, it swings its other arm, adorned with an axe, in a horizontal arc, hoping to slice both targets clean in half. Mechanically speaking, the axe has the ability to strike two targets with the same attack, so long as they're within five feet of each other. In some fights, bunching together in a defensive line like this might be a great strategy. However, the Titan is built to break the front lines, and excels at crushing groups of enemies like this. Following that same vein of the Berserker combat style, the Warforged Titan also has excellent defense. Its body is covered in many thick steel plates, so getting a clean shot at its important parts is not going to be easy. Being a machine, it's also, of course, immune to pain. This is reflected by its Warforged Resolve ability. Once per day, the Titan can gain a great amount of temporary hit points. This might be confusing to your players at first if you use this ability in combat with them, because they're going to be wondering how a machine could possibly heal itself. This, however, is not really healing, it's just building up resistance to the damage that's being dealt to it. I would try to describe this in a way where the players are essentially forcing the machine to overclock itself. You could describe different vents opening up on its body and steam flying out as the gears inside of it begin to spin more rapidly. Or maybe the magical runes covering its body that give it life begin to glow and expand. No matter how you choose to describe this, if you choose to describe it at all for that matter, the players should just be certain that the Titan is doing something to benefit itself, even if they're not really sure at the time what that is. Now unfortunately for us, this is actually where the sourcebook version of the Titan ends. The Warforged Titan is a really cool monster aesthetically and thematically, but I feel like it has potential to just take it that one extra step further. In my conversion, I've given the Titan two new properties, the first of which is a fear effect. I mean, just the mere sight of this thing coming up against you has got to be just upsetting, right? So as such, I've given the Titan an ability that whenever a creature of medium or smaller size catches sight of it, it has to make a wisdom save or be frightened. I imagine seeing a Titan barreling towards you and your comrades on the front line would be enough to make most men break rank. 
Now for our second property, imagine having a titan on your side. Imagine just watching as the massive metal behemoth cuts down droves of the enemy. Would that not make you feel a little more safe, at least? A little bolder, perhaps? It's for this reason that I've added a trait to my conversion that gives a bonus on saving throws to any creatures within 60 feet of the titan. It basically functions just like the bless spell, except it only works on saving throws and not attack rolls. Now the last thing I think our new and improved titan needs is some sort of ranged attack. And I think I've got just the thing. In my conversion, you'll find an attack called Arrow Volley. Essentially, this ability allows the Titan to mechanically slide over the armor plate covering its back, revealing a housing chamber containing dozens of arrows. The result is a projectile attack that can hit targets in a 20 foot radius up to 120 feet away. I have limited this ability though so that I can only use it twice per long rest. The reasoning behind this is because my version of the Titan has two arrow chambers and once those arrows have been fired out, there's no way to really get them back in. Basically it can't use them again until the arrows have been reloaded and the firing mechanism reset, which I imagine would take at least a couple hours. So that wraps up my conversion for the creature itself, but let's talk about plot hooks here. First and foremost, if you have a Warforged faction in your game, a Titan can be a great way to mix up their ranks a little bit. A squad of Warforged troops with a Titan in their rank would be comparable to a group of soldiers accompanied by a tank. That can make for a great encounter on its own, but the only problem is that relies on you having roving patrols of Warforged in your world. However, if you do want to still run this encounter and your game doesn't have that Warforged presence, you could always have the players stumble across some ancient Warforged maybe trapped in a cave or buried underground. Perhaps disturbing them triggers some sort of event where the Warforged spring to life and not really realize what's going on, they jump to attack the players. After two or three rounds of this, a rumbling can be heard and felt within the ground. The next round, the Titan either bursts through the wall of the cave or emerges from the ground below. This could turn a fairly easy encounter into a potentially deadly one within seconds. As far as the standard Warforged go, you could just use the stats from the creature like the Bandit in the Monster Manual's appendix. An encounter like this also leaves some really great room for RP elements if your players are the talking types. And who knows, if they play their cards right, they may have found some new powerful allies. Speaking of which, there is an interesting bit of text about the Titan from the source book that basically explains since they have such low intelligence, they essentially follow the commands of whoever happens to be holding the symbol of their creator. It even goes on to say that it will do this regardless of the creator's original goals or how much time has passed. I'm sure you can piece the rest of this together on your own, but basically that means if the players somehow manage to find an item bearing this symbol such as an ambulant or a ceremonial hammer, the Titan will follow their commands. If the players decide to do this, a Titan could be a game-changing addition to the party. It would make an excellent ally for traveling over long distances across land. You could even put Warforged parts in old forgotten dungeons that haven't seen the light of day in centuries. Maybe some alternate weaponry for its massive limbs, like a cannon that can be loaded into one arm, or just a regular hand so it's able to pick up and grab things and help with more utility purposes. You could even allow them to find some sort of rune that maybe upgrades the intelligence, like a version 2.0 patch for the Titan. Also, that would make it so they wouldn't have to carry the symbol around constantly. Ultimately, you can take this idea pretty far, and if you're not opposed to your group having access to a giant killer robot to either guard their home base or escort them over long distances, it makes for a really great reward that's not just another magic item. If your characters are a lower level, you could have them discover the Titan and he's all beat up and rusted and not really of much use. But as the players stick with him further and further throughout the campaign, maybe they learn more about how to fix him and they find parts here and there and he ultimately becomes more and more useful, essentially leveling up the Titan as the party does the same. And I mean, if you like the idea of the Warforged Titan, but you don't really have room for Warforged or anything that mechanical in your game, you can always just retype it as a golem as well and just basically keep the same stats, but instead of describing him as a mechanical monster, he's literally just made out of stone and enchanted or something like that. Because of the very nature of how the Warforged Titan works, it's very easy to just tack it on to another encounter that's built up mostly humanoids or some other creature that can command it. 
anyways, that's it for today. I think the Warforged Titan is a truly awesome monster, and if you do too and you plan on using it, please let me know in the comments below what you plan on doing. If you enjoyed this video and you like what I do here, please subscribe to the channel. I have at least one new video every week, hence Monster of the Week. Also, in case you didn't see it, the monster conversion can be found linked in the description below, right next to the links to Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Speaking of which, I now have a Facebook page, so make sure to tell your friends and spread the word. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.